The poetry of Seamus Heaney is particularly interesting for the way it uses language to construct landscapes. Now, the focus of this presentation is on the way he uses language to create physical landscapes and linguistic landscapes. We're going to focus on these four elements in talking about these landscapes. We're going to be looking at how he uses language, how he constructs place, how he uses language and place to, uh, to talk about culture and inevitably about identity. For many, Seamus Heaney is regarded as a pastoral poet. Many of his particularly early poems deal with subject matter that is about the rural lifestyle. Now, the pastoral tradition idealizes rural life and landscapes, and Heaney explores the lost traditions and lifestyles of the Irish landscape. To that extent, we can see these as pastoral elegies. That is, they're focused on this pastoral lifestyle, but there's this sense of sorrow. It's almost as if they have died, and that's why we can say that they're a pastoral elegy. He's looking back longingly on something that is no longer there. Digging is a metaphor that comes up quite a bit, particularly again in his early poetry. We can see through this metaphor uh, that digging is about Ireland having a reckoning with its past. And digging is about a search for truth, an archaeological truth, a political truth, and a cultural truth. The boglands of Ireland have a key place in the Irish consciousness. They're first and foremost a source of fuel. It gets burned uh, for energy and a source of labour, a source of work. The bogs are also a source of myth going back hundreds of years in Irish culture. And it is a, a way of preserving the past and a metaphor for the present. What I mean by this uh, preservation of the past is that the bogs themselves preserve whatever goes into them because of the acidic qualities and the lack of oxygen in there. Bodies have been recovered that are thousands of years old that are perfectly preserved. Uh, there is wood that is perfectly preserved called bog oak that is drawn uh, that is brought out of the bogs and then used. The other part of the bogs is that they're a pejorative uh, term that's used by the English historically through colonization to attack the Irish and to put them down in many ways, in racist ways. Despite this, the Boglands do have this ongoing cultural connection, this ongoing uh, language and cultural connection to the Irish identity. So let's have a look at the language of digging. We're going to look at some samples, some extracts from uh, several of Heaney's poems and look at this trajectory of this image, of this metaphor of digging in his poems. By God, the old man could handle a spade, just like his old man. My grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on Toner's bog. Digging in one way can be read as an elegy for the nobility of turf cutting. We don't see Seamus Heaney looking down on his father for digging potato drills as a, as a farmer or on his grandfather for being a turf cutter. Heaney, as the, as the speaker of the poem, is in awe of his father and grandfather, whom he cannot follow himself. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it. At the beginning of the poem, we simply have the lines, Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. But by the end of this poem, the pen has changed. It becomes a metaphor for the spade. It becomes about digging into the cultural history of Ireland. And hence he says, I'll dig with it. Our pioneers keep striking inwards and downwards. Every layer they strip seems camped on before. The opening of this poem is actually about the American prairies, where Heaney writes, 
We have no prairies to slice a big sun at evening. Everywhere the eye can see to encroaching horizon is wooed into the cyclops eye of a tarn. The comparison here is about the American pioneers who went out west to discover new, new parts in, uh, of America and to also create that American identity. Here we have Heaney saying uh, that the Irish pioneers dig into the ancient past and into the cultural soul, where it says inwards and downwards. That inwards is an internal cultural digging that happens, and we have that line, every layer they strip seems camped on before. The landscape itself is a kind of palimpsest, and a palimpsest is a piece of paper, a piece of uh, manuscript that's been uh, written over the top of over over centuries. Little adulteress, before they punished you, you were flaxen-haired, undernourished, and your tar-black face was beautiful. My poor scapegoat. I almost love you, but would have cast, I know, the stones of silence. I am the artful voyeur of your brain's exposed and darkened combs. Punishment from North can be read as the culmination of digging and bogland. Here we have Heaney's pen digging into the past, using the bog bodies of Denmark as metaphors for the political troubles in Ireland. Where in his poem Digging, we have him digging into his, a personal history, coming to terms with himself and where he will go to in his life. And in Bogland, we have him looking in the grand scheme of Irish history. And now we have Heaney talking about the present, the troubles. We have a girl who was akin to the young Irish women who had romances with British soldiers and would be punished by the IRA. And Heaney condemns himself. For his silence. He would have been silent uh, with the girl uh, in, this, in these ancient times that he's seeing in this museum and he is condemning himself uh, now and condemning others as well. So we can see now this trajectory of this image of digging from his first poem digging through to Bogland and now into punishment. I'd like to move on now to the landscape of language, looking at how the landscape and the language of Heaney's poem are really tied together in an interesting way. Heaney's poetry is as much about the sound of the language as it is about the imagery and the figurative language. When we're reading his poems, we're seeing the, uh, the culmination of language and identity and place coming together through this use of synesthesia. Heaney celebrates the sense of otherness that resides in Gaelic, particularly through his toponymic poems in Wintering Out. My place of clear water, the first hill in the world where springs washed into the shiny grass and darkened cobbles in the bed of the lane. Anna Horish soft gradient of consonant, vowel meadow. Here, Heaney is memorialising a place from his childhood, a place called Anna Horish, which interestingly isn't found on any map, but locals in the area near Mossbourne know exactly where it is. Here, place names have multi, a multi-sensory quality that we call synesthesia. The syllabants of the S and the SH in the opening is particularly interesting. And so here, the sound of the name Anna Horish is uh, captured as part of the identity, where we have the soft gradient of consonant vowel meadow. He is bringing together the visual imagery of the place, the meadows and the, and the gentle hills of the area, with the sound of the, of the name of the location. It's a really interesting thing that he does yeah, throughout his uh, book, Wintering Out. My mouth holds round the soft blastings, tomb, tomb, as under the dislodged slab of the tongue I push into a souterrain. Tomb is another place name that we find near Mossbourne. 
The shaping of the mouth to pronounce place names becomes the subject of Heaney's poetry. Language itself is part of the cultural archaeological project of Heaney's work. The garden mould bruised easily. The shower gathering in your heel mark was the black O in Bruch. Its low tattoo among the windy burr trees and rhubarb blades ended almost suddenly, like that last the strangers found difficult to manage. On a walk with a companion, Heaney brings together the synesthetic link between climate and word shape. Language and identity come together through language and place. It is not just the location or the place name. It is the sounds of the vowels, it is the sounds of the consonants, and it is the difficulty of pronunciation that brings together the language and the place and the identity. By looking across a range of Heaney's early poems, we can see his particular interest in the physical and the linguistic landscapes of Ireland. We see this recurring image and metaphor of digging in the early poems, and we see that shift and evolve from digging to bogland to punishment. We see in digging that he's interested in the personal. Then in bogland, we're seeing digging as this historical uh, uh, metaphor. And then in punishment, the digging to find bog bodies and the discovery of these bog bodies becomes a way of talking about the present, of talking about the Irish troubles in the 1970s. We also have in these early poems a particular interest in the linguistic landscape, where it is not just about the imagery of what the landscape looks like and what it means, but the sounds of the place names itself the sounds of the language of the place names and the locations and how they appear and, and the impact they have on Heaney personally is all part of his using language to explore the Irish culture, explore Irish identity and to carve that out for his audience. <laughs> 